Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, those of you who are seeing us on TV later on uh, should know that our meetings are not only filmed but archived. So if you get really excited, you can go back to the beginning and see all the things we've been doing and talking about. Um, we are ADA compliant here at Town Hall, and uh, we would love to have you come down and check us out in person. We have seats here, and we have our eighth member arriving as I speak. So we have everybody here from the committee except for uh, Debbie Homewood. And uh, we have Patrick Duchesne, our staff support. And uh, it's an honor to be part of this group. And my first meeting is uh, chair, which was sorted out last month. Um, first order of business is approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, those were all <coughs> circulated from Patrick, and you also have a hard copy in front of you. Um, anybody have anything that they noticed? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Any additions? Changes? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Or at least without objection. <laughs> um, next up on the list is status updates. Um, first bullet is all approved projects to date. So that would be the four projects approved at town meeting plus the chapel. Yep. Since the chapel is the oldest, why don't we... Uh... So I have uh, I guess hands up beforehand a single account inquiry for the chapel. The notice at the top, the remaining balance <coughs> in that account is $96,450. I spoke with uh, Linda Clark in from the accounting department just to kind of get an idea of from her end, whether any of the new shoes they were wrapping up or not. Um, I was told by her that another big invoice, I guess, is expected, but that still is a project that has not been closed out by the PBCC yet. So, it remains to be seen how much money will, whether the whole remainder will be used or whether anything will be coming back to us. Mm -hmm. um, our former chair has been. Mm -hmm. uh, on the case, checking in regularly to try to goose the paperwork along, mm -hmm. and, um, as have you, Patrick. And mm -hmm. is there anything that either of you think we ought to be doing in addition to what we've been doing to try to bring this to a speedy conclusion? I don't know about speedy conclusion. I think we just need to get statuses. You know, I mean, if it takes them longer to finish the project, that's how it goes. But I think we just need to know where they're at and what do what we've been doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're just, you know, periodic check in with them. They're just because we want closure on our on our piece of the project. That's not going to expedite matters in any way. They'll take their time, do what they need to do, and we'll find out when we find out. Okay. But we will continue to. And we're not Partner paying a price by that. Um, we're not paying. The only, in, in my opinion, I, I don't think we're paying a price because the money. There's no demand elsewhere for the money. Like if there were another project, let's say that we, if we found this ninety-five thousand dollars that was still unresolved, then it, you know, some other project may suffer because we didn't have that money resolve to be able to hand it off and we're not in that situation yeah i mean we in the group agreed that you know appropriately four hundred thousand dollars for that project is where we're at and so that was the money that was felt was comfortable enough to give towards that project um we just want to know the status of whether that and i think we've already you know we talked about this numerous times i mean the projects that we have going forward that we work with for a year and we work to the applicants I think there's going to be a lot, we're not going to have the same issues with those projects that we had with this project, which was more of an emergency project the first year when we weren't particularly ready to handle. I think the, I think the course we're laying for these next four projects, we've definitely learned a lesson, a lesson with the chapel, um, specifically as far as communication and feedback and updates and that sort of thing. It's been very, 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 very difficult to get anything 
as far as updates from the PVCC? Do they say very? So I think from that standpoint, we've learned that we've learned that we need to manage with the pro the other project managers going forward. You know, it, we can't let the, what did we do the chapel a year and like 14, 15 months ago? Yeah. Is when we funded it. We had a town meeting agreed to fund it, and even at this point, we don't really know where it's going to end up. So I think we, in my mind, I think we just learned something from this. Hello. Thank you. I think that um, I think Mr. Greeley's right, and I think that we can use this as a guide for the future. Mm. And this is just business in a matter of course. That's how it goes. It's all construction projects are like that. Mm -hmm. So we better just get ready for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone? Anything else on this report? Uh, we'll look for future updates. <coughs> um, now we have the four projects we approved at town meeting, and um, Peter has done some uh, work on nailing down timelines and such for the two rec projects. Peter? Yeah, I met with Travis last week um, to talk about his two projects. Um, he is he's met with Kathy Connie to go over timelines and, and see what it has to go out to bid and things like that, because he, he thought the threshold was $10,000, anything over ten. Unless it's a preferred vendor on the state list, um, they might be to be able to use those vendors instead of going out to bid. But if there isn't one, then they'll have to go out to bid. Um, he was hopeful that Bond Street would move first because it's very it's only two components to it: the DPW going in and leveling the site and preparing it, and then the second one would be the vendor coming in and laying the surface. So as far as that goes. Um, <coughs> He, he was hopeful they could get that done this October, um, as far as that goes. It looks like that, you know, late September, October, you know, that's kind of like he was talking about right now. Um, as far as Low Belch, she talked about um, maybe trying to, if <coughs> things broke right, trying to get the, um, the ramp done this fall. And then um, his feeling about resurfacing uh, the, the play area he was hopeful. He wanted more or less to wait until the spring because he felt the winter would be, um, you know, they wouldn't get used, and just to have it sitting there and exposed to the weather, I figured it would be better um, doing it in the spring. So we, and plus that's got like five components that mm -hmm. might have to go up to bid if, if, like I said, if there isn't any vendor that can, you know, do it within what, you know, he's budgeting. Um, so as far as that goes, so. Um, you know, I talked and I you know, you mentioned, you talked to John about the uh, probably inviting Travis in in September. I would uh, recommend have him coming in uh, in September because <clears throat> by that time he'll probably have a good idea what the, the um, you know, what his timeline's going to be, and, you know, and how he can pro uh, proceed with uh, those two projects. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's about it. Um, I then had a chat with Patrick because I thought your idea of having Travis come in in September was a good idea that we should apply to all of our project managers. That'll become our first of our regular quarterly in-person updates and we'll continue to get monthly updates by the means we've been using to date. Sure. Uh, Patrick, is it possible to have a uh, <clears throat> sort of a combined simplified schedule for the coming year with milestones for each project shown on it. Yeah, I think I, would, I can do that for next meeting. And I, we obviously need to think about scheduling all meetings going forward. Um, I, think, like, I think August is our own last scheduled meeting, so we got to also worry about public hearings that we need to think about. And so maybe that would probably be a good task for next, for August. Just right, and days. we will come back to the public hearing date. Uh, Helen, you had a comment? Thank you. In regard to the uh, doing the ramp first, and that seems like a very good idea because the, as everyone knows, there's a steep grade change there. Mm. And so all the construction will ch will have runoff, all of the, the um, work that's done there may change things. So if everything washes out for the winter, then we'll have an indication of how it would have affected the new area that we're going to work on. That's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other comments on those two, Cheryl? Oh, on those? No. Okay. 
Phil, did you? Did you have something, something else? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I, I did talk to uh, Lee Leach about the Carillon. He and I have mm -hmm. met uh, once already, and we're actually going to meet right after this meeting, um, just to try to get an update. Um, <clears throat> as he had described back in town meeting, um, his game plan, his timeline, is to get through the summer Carillon series first, mm -hmm. which is uh, the third, I th think it ends the third week in September, in uh, August. So he basically won't do anything until that series is done. But the, I forget the gentleman's name, who comes and does annual maintenance on the Carillon, was here in the May-June time frame. And while he was here doing maintenance, he also did some of the preliminary specs and research and just qualifying the condition of the, of the work that needs to be done. So he's already done some prelim work just as part of his uh, annual visit. So I think in that regard, and the, and the guy commutes up from Virginia. So uh, Lee was happy that he was able to also incorporate some of the new project uh, uh, you know, specs and uh, review during that previous visit. Um, he's still, um, <clears throat> uh, Lee I think has one of the things we're gonna work on tonight is that timeline once we get past August, what does Lee think the rest of the project timeline is gonna look like? So I hope I'll have that by the next, by August. As I recall, he had a bit of detail about the whole timeline in their proposal. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good starting point. Yeah. And I think that discussion, there was certainly discussion while well, uh, the maintenance, previous maintenance was going on as to whether or not that timeline was still good. Um, mm -hmm. The guy the guy that does the maintenance and is lined up as the main vendor um, going forward also has a project in, I think, Virginia or North Carolina. So there's, the timing is good because he's tied up in for the summer months in that other foundry work. So the ending of the Carillon series and the availability of this vendor coincide. So it's, it sounds like we're in pretty good shape. Peter, you had something? Just a question. Um, does Lee foresee any time when the Carolines be down for an extended period of time, or do you think they'd be just fixing? I mean, it, eventually they're probably going to go after the panel, and that'll probably be down for a while, I would think. Yeah. But as far as all the other, you know, take a bell out, put a bell, you know, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like in and out, or I don't know how he's going to work or anything like that. If there's anything, you know, just that thought about how, how if they're going to go about doing it, if the Caroline would be down for a period of time, or yeah. you know, just. I think there's only, uh, if you think of the winter months, November, December, January, there's only maybe two, maybe like Thanksgiving and the holiday season when the Caroline is in use. Yeah. Um, okay. Other than that, nobody would really notice if it's down or not. Okay. Um, you get into the, the, if there's physical work being done, you get into the, wind, the weather and exposure and that kind of thing. But um, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of prep work here the 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 vendor goes away and does a lot of magic in their shop down in North Carolina, and then they're going to come back up and install and do the maintenance here. So I think it's going to be a lot of, you know, peaks and valleys. There's some intervals where we, we yeah. won't know if anything's going on or not. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of remote management that goes on. Now, if I understood you correctly, Joe, that suggests that the bells will travel together. You know, they'll be. It's not whereas Peter seemed to be. Describing mm -hmm. a one bell at a time sequence, mm -hmm. which didn't make as much sense to me. Um, yeah. I don't know whether either of you have a sense of how it would work. I think Peter's right. I think that yeah. they don't they don't all go together. I don't think. Yeah, he might do like one. Yeah, I would think he might take a series of bells. But I would think there you go. that yeah. big bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going anywhere. I don't even think it's going anywhere. Yeah. Except you're going to jack it up and take it offline, and that's about it. I think. I think that from what I remember of the presentation, the the bells themselves won't move. The only thing that has to happen is the the, the bells are disengaged from the from the the, from the structure itself, yeah. and then the padding, if there is a word for it, I forget what it is, um, the padding is replaced, and then the bell is reattached to the structure. I think the clapper, the 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 arm that swings inside the uh, inside each of the bells may be relocated to be kind of re. Um, refitted or whatever 
So the bells themselves won't move, and the, the clappers are fairly mobile. Not, not that I know what I'm talking about, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, John. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nevertheless. Perhaps yeah. when we have Lee and, and or Bernie in, in September, we can ask just out of curiosity this sort of detailed question mm -hmm. about the sequence. Uh, no money is riding on it now. It's just we like to have a sense of what's going on. Uh, Patrick, did you have a comment? I wasn't no. sure. Oh. I think it would be a great idea if Joe filmed it. And then Brian <laughs> brought it back and just showed us, oh, look. <laughs> we'll take a video tonight of the marijuana <laughs> being. One, if I could, but in line with the, the timeline, if we're going to put together a, a, a project timeline, it might make, <clears throat> excuse me, it might also make sense just from a predictability standpoint if we could attach, you know, like the, like the Bond Street if we think it's going to be maybe September and October, and we've been done by October, it might make sense to also attach a dollar amount to each one of those mm. waypoints along the timeline. That way we can, you know, we don't have to overmanage anything, but if there's a bulk of the money that's going to be spent in September, October, maybe, across all four of the projects, that might help us understand the financial flow. Cash flow. You know, we're talking roughly five hundred thousand dollars worth of project costs. So, with the except the Carillon, I think, you know, now knowing Travis's thought on doing some of the Walsh work in the fall and some of the spring, mm -hmm. that that's going to extend the timeline of the project and the money. Right. So it, I mean, it, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's kind of like like the Walsh. It might not be spent before next town meeting. Mm. It could be, you exactly. know, I mean, as far right. as that goes, so we'll still have to have it be allocated, but it won't be, you know, like we're talking about it, it, that 96000 from the chapel. I mean, the same thing. We go to spend money next spring. We want to know if that money's been closed out, so we'll have it, you know, maybe we'll have, you know, <coughs> I mean, kind of like I think you originally said we might have 40, 44000 of that money left. You know, we, we then use that 44 on projects coming up for next year, you know, as far as that goes. So we know when those things are closed out, you know, it could be one of those things where you have to come with money and then not having it actually spent it, you know, with the check for it. Mm -hmm. so. I think there's certain planning formats, and I was thinking of the Gantt chart, that would allow you, with a minimum amount of, uh, of ink, if you will, to show a range of time period over which a certain step and a phase is going to be taken care of, and you can annotate it with money. But I don't know whether that's within the capabilities of your software or whether you've got something else in mind, Patrick. I'm a little confused here. So we're dealing with projects that we're expecting to hopefully get their invoices that will be approved monthly. We have a monthly meeting. So obviously, I need the timelines back from all the applicants and kind of an idea of like Travis's project is more or less two-phased for one of them. You know, we got work getting done in the, uh, in the fall, the rest of the remaining in the spring. Uh, I don't know during that, let's say we have the next eight months planned out or something like that. I don't, even, I don't know if I need to assign how much money we expect to be spent each month. Is that where we're getting at right now? Or we're kind of waiting on to get the invoices from the applicants and then I can have kind of a total and see where we're getting close to the amount that was allocated for that project. So. I'm not sure what Peter or may have had in mind, but I was thinking more for the future um, when cash flow issues might be more pressing than they are now, that it might be useful to have a tool like that set up that can allow us to have more real-time information. Uh, Helen, you had some thoughts? I did. I think that each applicant has a contract for what they're going to do. And when we approve their application, or when their application gets approved, then we'll have a knowledge right there about how the money will, say for example, the belts. X amount of dollars at the beginning, X amount of dollars when the job is half done, final payment, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then third, with the monthly and third. monthly mm -hmm. statements, then we should be okay. Yeah. I think it's just a spreadsheet going, you know, 215000 and then, you know, 20000 was spent in October, 50, you know, it just goes out and then 
you know, and that will just show at the end that we yeah. have, you know, I don't, I don't think we need to pro form it. Okay. I don't and, think so either. Yeah. I, I just think we just saying. need to, you know, bucket it by month. Right. Yeah, as far as that goes. I agree. I'm, I mean, the pertinent concern is that each of those projects stay on their budget. That would be the concern, that they don't go beyond what was permitted they in the can't. allocation. Right. They, they, right, can't. Well, they can't. I know they can't, so that would be the concern several, in watching yeah. their expenditures. We're trying to do several things simultaneously here. Um, it's much easier to, to know what we want to show if all we're concerned about is looking backward, what's been spent, mm -hmm. instead of looking forward, what is going to be spent. Once we're looking at what has been spent, then the first question is Tony's question. Uh, so is somebody going outside of their budget? But there are a lot of budgets involved. There's the budget for the whole project, their budgets for the parts. Mm -hmm. They could be running over on a budget for the part, but they have that figured out. They've got mm -hmm. a contingency, they've got an ability to absorb it, and so forth. But I think it's still useful for us to prompt a conversation. That's why we want these regular meetings and reports, so that if we see something that uh, deserves to be mm, pro. Red flag. That, yeah, that we could do so. Um, we seem to be falling into a state where um, Peter is our liaison to the two rec department uh, contracts, Joe to Lee's Carillon project, and I assume Cheryl to the mm -hmm. Concom project. And if everybody's comfortable with that, I'd say let's make that an ongoing deal. Mm -hmm. If they're willing to. I'm seeing nodding that. heads and no shaking <laughs> heads. So. Um, which brings us to you, Cheryl, in the fourth project. Okay. As you guys <clears throat> know that um, the town hall got a new accounting system and everything, and then Kathy was on vacation and she came back. So we were um, getting ours together to go out for a bit. So that's where we're at. So as soon as we get the bids back and see how many people bid on it, then we'll know when we can start and then we can let the committee know that we're going to start on this date and this is what the bid came in at. Ours won't take long to do. I mean, it's a pad in the pavilion, move a couple boulders, gravel, <laughs> and some handicap signs. When are the bids due back? I have to check with Kathy on it. I'm not sure. She's the big genius. Yeah. 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 Well, it's good to have her involved. Uh, it, you think it's in August sometime, maybe, or later than that? Everything is dependent on switching over to Munis, as well as the county department carrying over revenues from 19. Uh, so right now we just got into FY20, so it, it's kind of held up right now with two big things that happen. One that happens every year, and then one that's kind of unique, which is switching over to the yeah. Venus accounting system. So all three projects are kind of, you know, I don't think they're going to be on hold that long, but, you know, we have other things to kind of get going yeah. before we get those. Because they just changed the, mm -hmm. their whole accounting yeah. system, yeah. and cool. they're still all learning it. Even yeah. though they've had training sessions, they're still learning it, and then they have to tweak it and get all the bugs out. Mm -hmm. Big endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. I, th I think the one, my feeling is we probably won't have anything concrete for until September. Right? Yeah. You know, I think it's you're in the same concrete. No He's going to be our funny guy tonight. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like we've covered our five projects. Um, Project expense accounts, that's project by project also. Yeah, that was kind of similar to what Cheryl was saying as well. It's, you know, every the county department's aware. I'm right here on the totem pole. Everything is up here right now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get in there and hopefully get everything resolved before August on setting up the expense account. That's fine. Yeah. And it, it may be the case for a while. Mm -hmm. But if we get to a point where there's actual significant delay or harm to our projects arising from this protracted changeover. Yeah. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I want to know if it's happening mm -hmm. so we can uh, consider 
yeah, putting our thumb more firmly uh, on the scale. Continue to let everyone know, but I don't imagine it will be. I think it's just kind of, it, yeah. We just switched over to the system on Monday, so that was like the first official day. So it is kind of it may take a couple of weeks, but I think we'll get everything involved. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> John. Uh, so Joe and I have been in contact with the town accountants and they're saying after the system uh, conversion happens and they work out some of the bugs, they'll be back in contact with us. They're hoping by the end of July they'll be able to sit down with us and work through getting the GL account set up for each of the projects. So hopefully by the next meeting on the 14th, we'll have more definitive answers for you. John, what's this? Sorry? You said you reached out to you. Yeah, so uh, Joe and I were emailing some of the town accountants and they were Can saying... Can you include me in those emails? I think you were. Other Yeah. Remember his... Yeah. There hasn't been much traction in the last... or much conversation in the last couple of weeks as they've been migrating, but um, it was um, after the last CPC meeting, um, but before the conversion started and they basically pushed us to end of July. So I can add you to the last one just to bump it up, but... Yeah, well, hopefully we can get in front of them, and, you know, do what we need to do. One of the first places I worked, um, they were coming out with the second edition of a statistical report, which was two years after the first edition. The intention was that it was annual, and the standing joke was we, we said it would be out by July, we just didn't say what year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that occurred to me as, you know, it's going to be ready in July, and we just have to make sure it's this year's July. Yeah. It's an old joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am too, so. <laughs> okay, community preservation plan. Um, we've got our letters out to the committees. It's about it okay. right now. And it's due back in August. August 15th. Um, the open space and recreation plan, too, will hopefully be included. Um, uh, we will hopefully get a draft by the 22nd, and it will be sent to DCS to, you know, to begin the process of um, uh, by just as certifying it. But it's contingent also upon the committee meeting and providing um, edits if need be. So that's something where we talk to at NPC. So we'll hopefully get a new draft. We we'll meet the committee and we'll send any edits over, but we want to send it to DCS. Uh, DCS as soon as possible so that it can um, get the process going for certification sooner rather than later. We don't want to have to wait on the edits, but it is contingent upon additional edits. So we've got, uh, for input to the revision, mm -hmm. we've got our own review. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, the various committees' input, if there is any. Mm -hmm. We have new major plans. This seems to be the one. <coughs> Yeah, and that yeah. is going to be coming in new on the schedule that would affect our plan. It'll be coming in, but I, I guess it depends on when we hope to do the annual update of the, the needs assessment. Because I don't think the planning, I don't think the open space and recreation plan will be ratified by the time that we originally talked about updating the needs assessment. Peter? Yeah, I, I don't think we need to have it. I mean, basically ratified, I think we just need to know what the goals will be. And, and you know, so that any goals that we didn't include in our plan, we just need to know, you know, so it's, it's I, I don't think it's, we, you know, because, you know, I would think it's, you know, once it's filed, I don't think there'd be a big problem with it, because I think MAPC's, you know, done plenty of these. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any issue with that. But I just think, you know, once it's, you know, finalized to go. We just need to know what the uh, object, you know, the goals are. So we just want to make sure that we're lining up with that. And I think that's all we need out of that report. You know, as far as that goes. So it's not really a ratification thing. It's just okay. That's what we decide what the goals are for open space and recreation are going to be. And we want to make sure we incorporate it in our, our uh, you know, needs assessment. That's all. In the same spirit. Um it's uh, the input that we get from the committees will be focusing on any changes to the goals. From a plan, changes to the goals. From the public hearing, changes to the goal. And so our internal review is the one place where we're going to look for ideas about 
any of the other material that could stand a little clarification or amplification or whatever, simplification. And so now we need to talk about when all that's happening. Um, we talked at the last meeting about public hearing shouldn't be any earlier than September. And, but the, the farther we go into the fall and the farther we make changes to the needs assessment, unless we're sending out our call for applications sooner than we have a change to the needs assessment, um, we're going to be compressing the time we have available uh, for people to write their applications and for us to digest them and rate them and so forth. Peter? Didn't we have um, a public hearing either the last week of September or the first week of October last year? I, I think we're, we can fit that timeline in for I, you know what we're doing. I think it's because the last time we were writing it, <laughs> never mind trying to figure out what it was. Um, so I mean, we just need to fine tune it for. I, I would project the end of September. We should probably come in our August and um, pick a date sometime. You know. Like I said, either last week of September or the first week of October. And mm -hmm. we can um, keep our same timeline as we did last year. Patrick, can you or Joe confirm that that's when we did the public hearing last time? Yeah, I'll have to ask September 24th for some reason it sits in my mind. But I think it was before that. I think it was mid-September. But, I mean, we're, within a week, we're in the same, within a week of the same neighborhood, sure. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It was in the latter half of September, I know that. Yeah. That's a Noah day. Oh, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That so, much can happen before Noah day. <laughs> so taking the rather than the taking the dates as given, taking the principle that you enunciated as given, we're gonna aim for the same yeah. time period mm -hmm. uh, when we had it. And uh, I think if if it's mid September we should be able to turn around all the changes that we have for the needs assessment and publish it by the end of September. Yeah. So, so we could target that as the uh, date for the release of the call for applications. Or we could have the call for applications out earlier and just tell them that this document, which is useful, will be modified and available to you on this date, would, and will there will still be time afterwards. Um, I have heard from people who are already starting to work on applications, so they're assuming that nothing major is going to change, um, and they're probably right. Um, so anything that uh, allows us to respond to that, keep that momentum going, I think, is in everybody's interest. Um, just a point of clarification, yes, I'll just check my handy-dandy calendar. and. Peter, you're right. It, last year it was September 26th, okay. Wednesday the 26th of September. 24th, I think we was that Monday, and we couldn't get it. Could get something done on yeah, until the 26th. Yeah. Okay, so let's just see what September 26th is this year. The Thursday. So we'll probably, probably want to stick with it. So the 25th would be the Wednesday if we're sticking to Wednesdays, and maybe if you could see whether we can block that in, Patrick. Um, so we want to schedule that for the release, or do we have a public hearing? For the public hearing. Public hearing. And then giving ourselves a bit of breathing room, we'll, we'll plan to approve the, the needs assessment at our October meeting. Yeah, and we did it the well at home. That's why you know, we had a change because we had a problem with scheduling scheduling yeah. on the 24th. That's why we changed to the 26th. <coughs> like the Willetham wasn't available and we kind of locked ourselves into that one. You see, I, I think we had plenty of seating for, uh, for the people who turned out. Yeah. yeah, I mean that holds 75 people easily. What was the meeting at the, at the uh, police and fire? <coughs> what was that open meeting for? Arrest. Mm. Oh, it was like a dry run for the um, the projects, so people could see the projects that were mm -hmm. accepted. We we're required to have a hearing where the mm -hmm. the project applicants all 
to a pitch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was, yeah, that that was, was what yeah, that was. Yeah, it's like a dry run for a town meeting. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking last year. <clears throat> It, it all just sort of merges. <laughs> I'm not I mean, when you talk about with this. It was after the applications were filed. Yeah. I just to kind of throw a little curveball. Um, we talked at various times about an annual calendar, and these September, July, August, September dates we we're talking about would play nicely with a May of 2020 town meeting, but in the event of a fall special. Um, we don't have to talk about it or you know decide anything tonight or whenever. But I, I guess we should keep in mind maybe that there might be a need a need for eight items or less kind of side path to to a fall special time meeting. So. Wednesday's good though. We're still good on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm sure. glad you brought that yeah. up because I wanted us to think in more detail about what it would take for us to have. Um, a fall cycle, because the the vote at town meeting would have to be the end point, and that's mm -hmm. special town meeting, which is November, mm -hmm. Typically, yeah. October, September, August, July, four months. Mm -hmm. So we would have, I think, rather than having a, a <clears throat> an appeal for people to to bring in applications on a second cycle. Uh, we could say that um, we'll we will consider <coughs> applications that may have come in originally in the earlier period, but for whatever reason got bumped off the schedule. That would be the, the purchase of the property and the various per permutations of trails projects. If we get in an application that's already benefited from having been worked on in this earlier period, so it shouldn't take quite as much time, we can have a schedule that says, if you can get that into us by this date, then we'll have time to be able to discuss it and act on it in time for ratification at special town meeting. And I'll throw it over to you, Patrick, to see when we should be issuing that. Yeah, I just got probably to clarify those dates in front of Cooper, figure out what we're working with for the special and obviously count backwards and see what dates probably we don't look at. Uh, we, we also would be sending the letter that says this is an option for you only to the to two people. The uh, chair of the trails committee for anything related, or perhaps also to to Paul, and mm -hmm. if you've got right. you know other right. m multiple people involved in the proposals, and who would be the person who would get the notice that if you've got something that's finally ready for action, uh, the person who would know Paul Halkiotis, correct? Yeah. The person who would know Paul Halkiotis. And yeah. Paul could get both, and mm -hmm. get it, get each one to the the other people who need to see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not this. This is just kind of brainstorm. <coughs> excuse me, brainstorming. But if we, you know, from a calendar standpoint, we don't have a, we wouldn't have a lot of time between now and a fall special. Mm -hmm. But if we were talking about a public hearing in September, we could just, we could essentially, if if the stars aligned, we could have two public hearings on the same night. One could be de devoted towards a rewrite of the needs assessment for the for the annual cycle and then close that public hearing and then open another public hearing on any project presentations. Yeah. If, I mean, if we have any and if that fits. I'm just I'm just throwing out an idea. And obviously if we're thinking about the same lot, that was kind of the discussion right. whether or not that's coming forward and that's meant to go off track or whatever, you know, the dealing with uh, the whole 84 more street project now and making sure everything is done, planning board perspective for the um, you know, prior to uh, prior to construction, so that's one task that uh, Paul and um, Town Council is you know they're really working on, and um, I don't see it being a problem. But we'll have to wait and make sure everything is is set and ready for before we bring anything forward to you guys. Here, yeah. Um, the only thing I would encourage and somewhat discourage things that 
I encourage anything that has to do with like acquisition. You know, we have to buy a property or something like that because we don't have, it's not up to us, that timeline. If St. Slots come, I mean, we have, probably would have some time, but if a piece of property is coming on, it needs to be acted on. You know, and we have a, and we have a special for it, you know. We need to be able to, it's like the chapel. We just kind of needed to get that in. It's, but anything that doesn't require an acquisition, you know, like the trails, the land is going to be there. It's just a matter of them going through the cycle and getting their money and all that. And, you know, we recommend it to town meeting and that, 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 it moves along like it should. I, I, I think once we get into acquisition where we have to act on it, or otherwise the property's not available anymore because they're going to move on to somebody else. Um, I think that's when we need to res respond and respond quickly. The other things, I wouldn't encourage them to work out a cycle. I would say that they keep in the annual cycle and let them move according to that plan. Because if we had something like the Saints Lot that had to come up, it's going to take a lot of time and effort, you know, from what we have to do something, you know, to get that done. So I would kind of discourage anything that's not in the acquisition phase or needs an acquisition to be you know done quickly I, I would just let everything else kind of ride the regular schedule and we'll work on it as need be as far as that goes that's how i feel yeah. about it it's reasonable it yeah. is it's very yeah. reasonable yeah. but and that's something you know we could set some parameters that says it has to meet one you know at least one of the following three criteria you know either emergency or speed of acquisition or whatever parameters we, yeah. we create. Yeah. But the sooner we communicate those, the better, just yeah. to give people sure. expectations. Yeah. But I think that's a good idea, too. Yeah. Um, would that mean that when we tell people, like Paul, that we're telling him uh, not only that we'd be willing to entertain the St. Street project fully revitalized, <clears throat> for special town meeting, but we'd also be that this is an opportunity if there's some other acquisition project that we haven't seen before. Right, I, I think, like I said, anything that's, you know, if, if we don't act on it then, and we're gonna, you know, it won't be available, you know, so that, that's the only thing I, I, I feel that we should be, you know, always be flexible and be able to address you know quickly yeah. the other things <clears throat> they just go through the regular f phase of application and approval and all that so but where I'm going with this is um, I'm not sure it's really in our interest to put an invite out there for people who haven't even thought about an acquisition project and now we're being so I'm not encouraging like I said I'm yeah. not encouraging it at all well, but just if it comes if we it don't even up. have to talk also, about it yeah our, right. our yeah, flexibility is limited to the fact by the fact that there are two town meetings a year so if somebody comes in with an acquisition project that looks great and has a short burning fuse and they come in on December 1st I'm sorry but the soonest that we can yeah. have mm -hmm. that approved mm -hmm. is Right. annual town meeting yeah. either we either we call another special specifically right. for that and that's um, not our call that's not our call right or they just wait until may and hope that property is still available a few years oh, ago we had then. a special in what july because we had to do blue hills yeah right yeah, remember, remember, that, remember that, that, that one the one yeah. article meeting. one article special yeah. in, in the middle of the summer just for blue hills because i remember that I and you got a on? Yeah, we did. We were the only it, town. It, it, it passed. We were the only town out of nine that got a corner. Oh. Oh, yeah. It was the principal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for the fall. The only reason I brought it up is that we should, you know, if people... We have to be flexible. We have to uh, anticipate on anticipated things. Well, right. where we seem to be going on this seems to be better handled informally than formally. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick can let Paul know that... Uh, We've discussed the possibility that uh, an acquisition project, particularly the Saint Street project, might become um, actionable at a time that also fits in with uh, the, the already established schedule for special town meeting. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, we'd like to see if uh, we could get it in hand <coughs> in time to be able to include it 
on the hearing that we're planning for the end of September. Um, Ellen? Knowing Paul Halkiotis, I'm sure he's on top of it entirely already. Yeah. Well, he could have saved us a lot of time by showing up and telling us where we were going. <laughs> I think, memo, but, memo. <laughs> but I think the, Helen's point is that they, the wheels are turning project-wise, not so much how they fit into the CPA cycle, but the, the wheels are definitely I think turning. that's off anybody's radar. Right. <laughs> so there were it's all still. kinds of comments going around about the project. Has anybody heard any of those? No. 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 So Which that's that, that's um, Saint that Saint Street, Street oh. project. So that's why I'm sure that he's on top of it because they're having all kinds of meetings and stuff, from what I hear. What he may not be on top of is um, how it best intersects with our schedule uh, because he hasn't been actively involved in this for a while. Except and he and Patrick I, share the office and together. That's where I was going to. Yeah, we're, we're he's on top of it every so day. We're doing the 84 Moore Street, that's a whole separate thing. I'm not going to get into it because that's not really on our schedule, our agenda. But in regards to the same street, you know, that's hand in hand, but it's also, you know, it's kind of throwing that to the lawyers, yeah. especially to uh, town council to kind of come to a solution. Okay. I, think okay. we'll I, think, I think we're, <laughs> I think we're, we're good. Right. Um, I want, I'm going to anticipate an item from further down called subcommittees. At the last meeting, uh, I checked <clears> the minutes and I, I created a committee that's Patrick and Peter and me. And it said that that was to look at the uh, community preservation plan updates, which I want to continue working with that group. And it said to look at the application form. And I'd rather split that off uh, because I think it can be done more quickly. It doesn't formally require all the same kind of input. And I uh, asked Cheryl if she would chair that subcommittee just to see if any uh, revisions are useful on the application form. Here we wouldn't be looking so much to change the goals, but to change what we ask people that will make it easier for us to give their project a fair hearing. Um, I, pick, I asked Cheryl because such a large percentage of the things we ask about are building related and outdoor related and those are her two wheelhouses. Yeah. Patty, would you be willing to also work with Cheryl on this? Because the other thing I was thinking was anything we can do to make it an easier process for the housing people to put their projects in. And we didn't really design it with housing projects in mind, so we may have missed some questions we should ask or options to, to ignore questions. So sure, if you could yeah. work with Cheryl on that. Sure. And, uh, uh, let us know when you've got something. It, you know, it could be August, it could be September, anything in that time frame. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to be on that subcommittee? I, I mean, if you need three, I will. I mean, I can look at an application. But. Just the person I was hoping to speak to. <laughs> yeah. so. So the subcommittee is chaired by Cheryl and includes Patty and Tony. Yeah. Um, so I think we are done with item two, and it's sub bullets. It takes us to item three, project signs. Now, unfortunately, our project signs leader is not here, uh, but you had some material you circulated. Mm, that's good. Patrick, can you tell us what that So we'll at least talk about this with Debbie later, but um, so I reached out to uh, Canton and their, uh, their CPC administrator, Kristen Phelps, and she was great help just kind of giving a little bit of insight to how they, Canton does it. You know, they've obviously been established for a few years now. Um, big takeaways basically is that they have all applicants uh, factor in their own sign into the application process. Mm. And that was interesting. it makes 100%. Mm. Because, I mean, it mm. just makes sense because you know, signs are not cheap and taking it takes money away from our administrative budget. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can see uh, basically too that each project is different. You're not gonna have a giant, you know, you know, green metal sign like it shows here, like on the chapel. You're not gonna have, you know, what uh, historical projects are a little bit more um, um, a little bit need to have a little better sense of uh, 
you know, what you're doing. So it, it's kind of, it leaves it up to the applicants is basically what that, the gist of what I got out of it. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know how we feel about that, but. Well, it's hard to have a, a good discussion without Debbie here, but yeah. what I was going to suggest in her absence was perhaps you and she could get together and translate your good research here into a formal proposal for the next meeting yep. of how we want to handle it. And it sounds like we may be handling it differently for the projects we've already approved that didn't include this in their budgets and the ones down the road that will be asked to. Yeah, I mean, I would, you know, obviously it's up to the committee, but, you know, talking to her, it just made 100% sense. I mean, I, I just think it's something that, you know, using administrative funds for administrative purposes, you know, I think that's a better use of that account, whereas we're already having projects factor in contingencies, we can have them factor in what their sign would be and make a sign a requirement of all applications and leave it up to their discretion so to decide what they want to use. What kind of money would be involved if we made an exception for the four projects we've got now? It depends. Um, obviously, the chapel already has a plaque. Um, set up and it's a big factor that into their project. Um, oh we have the Carolyn mm -hmm. Tower, that's an historic project. I don't imagine that sign being something loud and flashy. Uh, um, but we also have you know, two recreation projects. We have a, um, a, a sign, a project dealing with open space. So I mean, it's, all, it's hard to say. I'm not, well, I'm not a sign expert. Uh, but I was a few thousand dollars to say. A few oh, thousand well, yeah. for the Upside? for the four. A few thousand dollars, I would think, for the four of them. I think it's easy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That's a conservative. I thought you said fifty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> 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 really nice. 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 I almost We're fainted. Gold, gold, yeah. Gold, yeah. Gold, so, gold, yeah. Gold, yeah. yeah. I almost fainted. Yeah. 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 To see whether there have been some meetings between. Yeah. Yeah. The sign makers. Sign and right. yeah. So being that we want to wear how other towns handled signs, where does the money for our current projects come from and will the various people or the proponents of those various projects be the ones in charge of deciding what the sign will look like? I guess where and where's the money coming from? Is it CPA? Will it be CPA administration since we didn't include it in the project? Well, I'm finding out what it would cost if we went that route, mm -hmm. uh, because with these approved budgets, we may not have a, another choice. But Patrick, maybe you. I was thinking too. Those. I mean, I, and I don't know how we go about doing this, but you know, all projects factored in contingencies. I'm assuming all projects are going to come under the approved amount that they, you know, that was uh, appropriate for each project. So we could have applicants factor the signs now with the. Okay. I don't know to get a rough idea. Well, signs are one of the last things you buy. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. So, well, you unless it's wait an see. ongoing project, yeah. like the one down like on, uh, yeah, right, yeah. like the bottom example, yeah. you'd want that up while the project's going. Right, so there would be sign two signs. Maybe that's no, there wouldn't be a sign after. It would just be that one while the construction is going on, and then it goes away. And then it goes away, so yeah. you don't leave a permanent one. I know in some right. places there's permanent mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. The only one I ever remember seeing is at Mashpee at this beautiful splash park, and it's a nice sign, always there, giving credit to the community preservation, so mm -hmm. that when people attend that park, mm -hmm. they're an appreciation of the, right. the the funds that were you know right. set up in taxation. Well, the the, the I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Pete. Pete. Okay. Joe? I, okay. My, my thing is that we uh, highly recommend that they display sign and all signs are contingent on approval by the CPC. Mm. I think that's how we do it, you know. That's fair. Yeah, I agree. And, and as far as that goes, we make sure that we like what they're going to say right. on the sign, you know, cause we, and how they present it. So, you know, I don't want to match marker or not. You know, no so a slap, let me slap some brain <laughs> down on a, on a sign and say, oh, this is CPC. No, 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 not, you know, not kosher, but. Um, as far as that goes, but I think that's how we address it, and we recommend that you know they display a sign and um, include it in the cost of their project. I think we just put that in the application. Mm -hmm. Early this morning, I have to tell you this. Early this morning, I was in Boston, and I was in uh, front of the Boston Public Library. And have you ever noticed on the top, all around the top of the edge of the roof, there's a big this building funded by the public citizens for the purposes of education. Mm -hmm. It was, and yeah. here we are talking about this now, the same day. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's really, uh, 
interesting how things are handled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the public good or something like that, mm -hmm. it said, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people want to know if we have some suggestions on signs. Uh, the, the, the freedom may seem more like a threat than a, than a help. So <laughs> let me go back to my original thought, which was, Patrick, you and Debbie sit down and, and figure out. I mean, I, I like Peter's two sentence, um, but I think there may be other things we want to provide as materials to people. I mean, here are mm -hmm. some examples of signs right. and resources um, and so forth, and also the uh, the options on funding for our current projects. Where I what I'm hearing is they probably can fit it into their existing budgets, and if not, we may find a way to make it happen anyway. Yeah. Um, no. The, what Pat Patrick has provided is. Uh, Two examples of a post-completion mm -hmm. um, signage, and it's interesting that both of these are joint in Canton. Both of these are, were joint efforts between mm -hmm. the CPC, CPA funds, and some other body, some other mm -hmm. entity. Mm -hmm. um, the the sign at the bottom is right. the construction sign. It's looking at this sign. It's definitely a one a one use single use sign. So every time you had a construction project, you'd mm -hmm. have to go out and create it doesn't look that beefy it might be a mm -hmm. couple hundred bucks right. for that construction sign maybe we could come up with a generic sign not project specific that we could reuse them i'm just thinking of what debbie would say as far as the people's money and mm -hmm. you know trying to uh, get a good bang for the buck out of that um i do know on bond street they just expanded the, I think they're into There's phase. A black there already. I think they're into phase two. Phase the phase one sign was replaced about a year ago when they expanded the lot. That they put in more features yeah. and slides, etc. Um, it's a, I was trying to come up with a measurement, but <clears throat> the current sign, both the old and the current sign, um, they were about the size of the smart board here. Um, they're they're wooden and they're engraved, and they were on four by fours, you know, driven into the ground. So it's. It's fairly stationary, but it might cost like seven or eight hundred dollars to construct, and it has a lot of detail as far as con contributions and sponsors, etc. So that might be so. A that might be something that might be a good gauge for us going forward from a you know size and content mm -hmm. standpoint standpoint. Um, but secondly, just as I'm talking about that, you know, we'd basically be running into a little competing signage here at Bond Street because there is a sign already for the expansion of the lot and now we're talking about putting up conceivably putting up a cpa funded hmm. you know enhancement to the lot so we don't want to get over complicated in signage here but we want it to be as streamlined as possible there are some options out there that pbs always has one where they uh, on air where they spotlight a particular sponsor and then and viewers like you is the catch-all for all the other money they got. I think if you look at the library right outside the elevator on the crown floor, there's a statement about um, a major rehab that, that has um, a list of primary sponsors, but there's a certain, um, I think, um, prioritization, if you will, um, I think there are ways you could make that work. It would amount to replacing a very nice sign with a different very nice sign, but it wouldn't require that the new very nice sign be CPA only or CPA first. It would just be CPA included. Um, and let me toss that one to Patrick and and uh, uh, Debbie also. Is uh, uh, what, what might we do differently in instances where there are uh, already signs up for sponsorship of related work or where, uh, as you had in the example, the project, CPA project itself, is being done with multiple funding sources? Good. Any other thoughts, questions, comments on signage? I like Kansas. Just need 
white out can That's how I do it. It wouldn't mind. Metal sign goes on the fence. Nice. Screw it in tight. To, to quote the title of a song from Stan Freeberg presents the United States of America. Everybody wants to be an art director. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're up to item four. Uh, prep work or fall application cycle. We've, we've talked about subcommittees and I've created two and um, once we have our public hearing date we'll want to have some people talking about how we structure the, the hearing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the precedent we just set which is do everything like last year with the fewer or no exceptions, yeah. perhaps you and I, Patrick, can sit down and refresh our memories of what we did last time and see if there's any tweaking we want to do to that. Yeah. Um, public hearing dates, we've already dealt with that. Application updates, what did you have in mind? Is that the updating of the application? Pretty right? much, yeah. Okay, so we've dealt with that. Right. Um, we don't even have an item that says new business. Heaven help us if business. anyone has any new business. Not in July. Not in July. <laughs> well, so. well, let's put something on the agenda for August. <laughs> um, Sorry, I missed that. August 14th still look good to everybody for our next meeting? I won't be here. I won't be here. I'm so sorry. Well, we oh. have phones in. <laughs> I'm going to be on the beach. <laughs> if we have, they have phones, you know. We have, no, they don't they want that. Yeah. Yeah. Join. August 14th is uh, the day after I come back from my beach vacation. Oh, there, so we get back the 17th. Uh, but I think we knew that August was yeah. going to be a light month. Uh, as long as we have a quorum, yeah. be fine. And Debbie said she could make August at the last Good. meeting. So. Yeah. Hopefully. You but you're not, so. <laughs> So it's at that August meeting that we'll set up a calendar that you yep. talked about a, a rest of the year calendar essentially. Rest or of the year, yeah, we can a good chunk of it anyway. Rest of the program year, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you pretty much stick and, to Wednesdays, uh, is that it? Uh, and you've Wednesdays, you've got the yes. input that you need, and, and you and I can chat if you uh, find that helpful. And, yeah. and then when you've got a draft, we can chat then too. Yep. Could could I suggest yeah, something yeah. for the August agenda? Yep. Please. Um, uh, a Facebook page, social media, because um, there is stuff to share. Mm -hmm. And once we start going on projects, we might want to put some stuff up, some pictures, photos. I mean, I, I, other social, I, I'm, <coughs> not, I'm not say partial to Facebook, but it's just I'm user friendly for me. I, if anybody else has other social media they like. I'm not even on Facebook. <laughs> no, I mean, you're not on Instagram either? <laughs> What, I don't how do you get photos? What's the town's position? You have to go through IT. It's a town thing. Facebook happens. page. The town has, the town hall in general has a Facebook page that's not even really touched as well as it could. I mean, we have obviously recreation, um, DPW, police fire, and they have pretty well run Facebook pages. I mean, if, if, it, if it makes sense, but, you know, I, I think it's also my own personal thing, my feelings about having our, the town's Facebook page in general kind of encompass multiple departments and mm -hmm. their updates rather than having every department having their own Facebook page, that's my right. opinion, but well, then every we, committee having their own page. But. Who is the admin? You have to go through IT yeah. to get the, uh, that will be like, okay. That's what I've been we'd like, told. We'd like so. to have it done, in a, you know. Sort of, you know, the town I run into this with another committee that I'm on, and the town Facebook page is, it's it's woefully under serviced or man or utilized. It's or un definitely underutilized. Do you do Facebook? Um, it, I think it's a good idea. We John sent a link to to me a couple of us about. Uh, Weston's news about their recent um, spending, mm. Weston CPA, uh, CPC. Um, so I think that there is a message that we want to, now that the wheels are turning and we're getting some momentum on our projects, um, it's good news and we should find ways to oh, yeah. make people aware of that. Oh, so every, every, almost daily, 
coalition is sending mm. out Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. coalition. That's, that's what I'm getting. At. Yeah, we don't want to turn it into a, you know, three ring circus or anything. But it's still, it it's good news, and that I agree that that's a good avenue for us to explore. Maybe we should ask see if each committee can have an administrator on a designated administrator, you know, or, or uh, somebody that can post to the page. Yeah, I'm wondering if other towns have I would their think own the own business would have CPC that Facebook page. For either that, we can just have one appear. If I not related to town hall. If I, can, <laughs> if I can volunteer to the chair. Probably wouldn't even know. Right. I, I could try to get you mentioned that as an August topic. Yeah. So I could try to get. We, we do want to do that. I want to. <coughs> this is what the Moral Memorial Library does, and it's a, a .org. It's its own website. And they have, it's just chock full of yeah. wonderful information. And I guess they didn't go through IT. Or they did, I don't know. They, they have uh, their own IT person. Well, see, .org, that's outside. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's outside true. government. Because it'd be .gov. Because it'd be .gov if it was through town hall. Right. Right. Yeah. So it, it's done by probably Is somebody it the, at it's not the Friends of Noah Library. Well, it sounds like we need options. Um, it's a great way to get the message out, you're right. Yeah. It, it sounds like people here have experience with different town committees and what they've done to try to get their word out. Um, I understand the concern over uh, the speed and quality of response by uh, town IT folks. Um, I also think that um, the outreach that you achieve may be less through town organs than through some others. That, that's been my personal experience. Um, but we are part of the town. We need to work by the town rules. Um, so can I ask uh, people who have information on this to feed it into Patrick and he can just put it together. When we get to that item on the August agenda, we'll have some more ideas and input, and you in particular may be more knowledgeable than the rest of us put together about what the rules are and oh, yeah. options mm -hmm. are. <laughs> do other towns do that? Do you know? Do what? Have a separate Facebook page for the community preservation. I think everyone does it different. I don't have a look into it, but I'm assuming uh, you mentioned Weston has one. Uh, the coalition posted it. Um, sort of uh, highlighting the Western project. Yeah. yeah it, was, it came, oh, to, the coalition. Okay. It came oh. to the coalition, not, not to Western. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone has a different opinion on how it could work. And I, you know. But probably not that many types of different approaches. Mm -hmm. um, and if the coalition, is, as they often do, have done a nice job of, of uh, picking out some good role models, um, then if you can throw that in the mix, Patrick, Anybody who wants to flag something that they found on that, send it in. So you mean like whether or not an individual town CPC has their own Facebook page or? Yeah, and maybe a screen capture picture of what does it look like when you first hit that page, so you get a, a feel for whether they've got a bare bones operation or they've got something that's really nice or something in between. Something easily navigable. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I have a feeling we are going to have our friends of the CPC organization. Pop there you up. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, anybody have anything else? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So August 14th it is, 530 here. <laughs>